Good morning, ladies. I am back and hoping the comments are working. So I'm just gonna wait a second in order for you to all come back and join me live. Ladies, I know Janine, Elisa, if you can message me, that would be awesome. Um, here we go. People are coming on. I see ya. I see the eyes on us. If you can comment in the comment section, that would be fabuloso. I'm gonna go over my routine quickly while we while people come on in and give me some comments. So this morning, meditation, gratitudes. Oh yes, it's working. I love it. We, our our comments are on. We are working and ready to go. So we'll just everyone is coming back in. I'm glad we have so many people listening this morning. Today is relationship day. Last week, I think it was the most popular day. We went real deep, real profound. And so if you want to go back and listen to it, it's a must listen. And so today we're going to give practical advice on how to implement all those theories into your life. And so this morning, my routine, tell me your routines in the comments. So I did meditation, heart meditation, where I just felt and radiated love through my body gratitudes, did my hot water and lemon with a pinch of sea salt for hydration. And then I lit a gratitude candle. So yes, yeah, so Janine loved last week too. And so the gratitude candle is just a white candle. I call it a gratitude candle or an intention candle. I usually call it intention candle. And I literally say an intention I usually close my eyes because I'm a nerd like that. And I light the candle. So this morning's intention was as I light this candle, may I be my may I ignite the light within myself and ignite the light within others today. Sending so much love and light to everyone in the world. Um, and that was my little intention. So I just really like it. It's a, just a fun little exercise. So good morning. We have Janine, Paige. I think Alisa was on. Okay, so today I'm gonna to start relationship talk with a little story and a dream, okay? This is literally my dream last night. So I woke up this morning and I was like, I have to tell it. Okay, so, and it's gonna give a really good example as to all of this work that we're doing. Every day we're talking about mindset and business and practical relationships and how to essentially just be happier and have more inner peace and have a better life regardless of what's going on around us, right? This is just the theme of everything that we're talking about. So my dream last night, I'll make it shorter, obviously, so I don't bore you. So I'm at an event. It's real time, real day, modern day me, but I'm surrounded by thousands of people I went to high school with, and I know all these people. Some of them I don't know, but you know, you get the idea. And we're playing some game, this guy's playing some game, and I really didn't want to play, regardless, my friend's like, stop being a Grinch, just play, put up your hand. Sure enough, out of thousands of people, he chooses me. He walks me to the front of the stage and thousands of people around me, barely anyone is clapping, okay? So I'm sitting there being like, what the heck? This isn't normal. Like nobody's supporting me, nobody's clapping. What the heck is going on? And if anything, people are rolling their eyes and kind of giving me dirty looks. And I'm like, this is really weird. What is going on? However, note, and here's the important part. Within me, in that moment, I was not bothered. I was not like, oh my God, people hate me. I don't like, you know, how I'm feeling right now or what is going on. Like, I wasn't freaking out. I was like, this is weird. Why are people cheering me on? And I was cheering them on to cheer me on. I was like, come on guys, let's, let's show some love. Let's do this. I'm here for you. <laughs> and I'm basically encouraging them and sending them love regardless of what they were giving me. Then anyways, got this random award. Again, people still not cheering me on. And I'm sitting there being like, this is very strange. I don't know what's happening, but I'm still like not phased by it. Do you understand? Do you see how I'm not like we talked about yesterday and last week, I'm not closing up. I'm not shutting down. I'm still feeling inner peace, regardless of what's going on around me. I'm not letting other people's reactions impact how I feel about myself. I'm just observing the situation. 
Anyways, take the mic. And I still on the mic gave them a little pep talk. And I said, I know life is hard and I know you're out there and you might be struggling. And regardless if we know each other or not, or what's happened in our past, I want you to know I'm sending you love and light. And if you need anything, I want you to feel comfortable reaching out to me because I will do anything I can to help you in any way I can. And that was my speech. And I love this. I love when I have great dreams. My, I told my boyfriend this morning, he's like, that is not a good dream. I'm like, no, it was. Because I always look at, and when you look at your dreams, little tip, dream analysis, I always look at how did I feel? And this is like life. How are you feeling in situations, in circumstances? Are you letting what's going on around you impact you? And that is, this is a perfect segue into our chat today about, you know, how do we face arguments? How do we face specific situations? I wrote down a bunch of situations here, you know, questions I'm often asked in relationships, you know, how do I manage an argument? Should I still be with this person? And these questions are the same, whether it's romantic partner and or friends, right? Um, do I need to do something? Do I need to set my boundaries? These are all questions we're going to tackle today. I hope we get into all of them, <clears throat> but the important thing about this dream and why I wanted to start out, I was still feeling complete inner peace and love for everyone. How people treat you is not about you. How you feel is about you. That's all you. It's not about the other person. Something we want to get really clear before we go into today, and I know this is not normal, okay? This relationship chat is not going to be the normal conversation. These are conversations that people do not have, that the average person and the books, they do not tell us this, but I have been living and breathing this for years. I implemented in my own relationship. These are more teachings of, if you've heard of Abraham Hicks, these are not normal relationship chats. And because I do not follow the normal, <clears throat> I want to share because it helped me so much. I also know that because I follow these principles, I was not able to talk about relationships to anyone. And I chose not to, because I really want you to look right now, this is relevant to relationships. I want you to look at the people surrounding you. So if we go back to my dream, are those people cheering you on or are they not cheering you on? Do you wanna be like the people around you? And if the answer is no, girl, we got to work on this because everything around you needs to help you, including yourself, live into your fullest potential. However, that does not mean, and here's where it gets confusing. When I say this, it does not mean you can, you need to go and have these tough conversations with people and be like, you know, we're not working anymore. I'm out of here it doesn't necessarily mean you have to take that drastic action. What it means is look around you. Everything around you is evidence of your current and past vibration. Okay. Where you're living up. If you're stepping into your truth. So if you're looking around and you're thinking, I don't want to be like these people. That's cool. You got to step up and you have to be the leader that everybody else needs especially for yourself. And so going back to some of the tools that we've spoken about, looking at what is your highest self? How do you tune into her every day? Because it's nobody else's fault if you do not have the life that you want to be living in. And that includes your partners and your friends. Because secret is that as you raise your vibration and take ownership of who you are in every situation, everything around you will change. And if it doesn't change, then the people will leave and you don't have to do anything about it. They just like leave miraculously, honest to goodness. They stop calling you. So little example, my one grandmother, have a little bit of a challenge with her. She's a little bit of a Grinch, not the nicest. And I know if I'm in a good vibe, okay, I will call her, she never picks up. People will just start not picking up. The people that don't match your vibration, they'll leave. 
I literally have called her three times, no response. Okay. So as we, as I give you that little pep talk, <laughs> I, and you know, and, and lead into now some tactical. So these examples, you know, your friends and family, your, your partner, should you leave them? Should you go? So I want to answer that question first. If you're with a partner and, or you have friends and people around you that are not supporting you and you're thinking, man, like I need to leave my partner. I, I need to leave these friends. I need better friends. Again, <clears throat> immediate action, not your answer. Your answer, alignment, and raising your vibration and feeling good. Everything else will happen naturally. And I need you to know your efforts in raising your vibration and changing the energy in your relationship is going to take time. You are on a fast moving train right now. And as soon as you realize, shit, I got to slow this train down and move it the other way. It takes a while to slow down the train and then it takes a while to move it back this way. So you have to be absolutely committed to changing your relationships. So with romantic relationships and raising your vibration, you might be thinking like, how the heck am I supposed to change how I feel when my husband is a retard? <laughs> Actually, I don't want to use that word because I understand that it isn't, um, it isn't very aware. So is being silly or um, is being irresponsible and not a good partner. So if that is the case, again, how are you feeling in the moment? I'm going to give you some practical tips right now. Number one, you need to be committed. It's great to have conversation with your partner. Go back to your partner after this, man, woman, roommate, I don't care. And you're going to tell them whoever you're living with, Hey, I want you to know that I'm trying to step up as my best self every day. And if we get into an argument or a confrontation, I'm going to start telling you I'm being triggered. And in me telling you that I'm being triggered, I want you to know it has nothing to do with you. My happiness is not determined by what you do. And I want to always be taking ownership and feeling good. So when I tell you I'm being triggered, I might just need a little bit of space. And maybe we can talk about it in that time. But if we're both super heated, how should we deal with this? Is it best for me to step away and give us that space so that I can look at my triggers and start to feel better and start to feel good? Or should, or can I openly tell you what I'm being triggered about and you realizing, you know, it's not about you. It's all about me. And I want to be, I want to show up differently in arguments. Okay. So this is the first step is actually having an open conversation with the people in your lives. For me, when I first started doing this with my partner, it was really simple because I told him like, look, I'm going to tell you that I'm, I'm triggered. And in that moment, because I was triggered, I literally would say, I'd close my eyes, take a deep breath. And I was like being triggered right now, being triggered. And it, for us, we didn't talk about it in that moment because I didn't want to engage in it. And at that point, he also was taking it a little bit personal. So your partner might take it personal that you're being triggered because again, in an argument, everyone's always looking at who's right and wrong. This goes back to our chat earlier this week on opinions, right? You don't have to have an opinion about it. No one has to be right or wrong. It's just one person's triggers against the other person's triggers. So the strength and the change is going to happen when you drop your triggers, then it's just the one person's trigger and you don't have an argument. And this is to say, this is ideal, obviously, we're human. I still get upset. I still have triggers. My partner and I will still have arguments. However, we're continuing to change those and how I show up and how we both show up in an argument is different. And we're always talking about how can we argue better, <laughs> right? Because it's not about right or wrong. Both of us are a little stubborn. And so we both get a little like, 
I still feel that like rightness. I need to be right. I'm right. And I'm really trying to, to settle her down, but paying attention. So number one is recognizing when you're triggered, paying attention to when you're being triggered and creating language around that for your partner and or whoever you're living with, because we're in close quarters now during quarantine. Okay. Second step is all you girl. You need to know, okay, what was I being triggered about? What happened there? Right? This awareness piece. You may not be able to do it in the moment. Maybe you can if you step away. But if you can't do it in the moment, you have to commit to that night thinking, okay, what triggered me today? What got to me today? And what was going through my mind in the moment? So I'm going to share with you trigger. Okay? And this is very real. These are, um, I mean, it's just... it's just very fascinating. And I, I, if you ladies have triggers that things that your partner or your friends have done to you that have triggered you and you want to workshop it, let's do it. Cause I'm going to be very open and transparent through my living examples. So we're in, I'm in the Bahamas with my partner and this was early on in our relationship. And so we're in the Bahamas, obviously everyone's in bathing suits and this like really sexy girl walks by and he looks okay. So number one, think about how you feel about this situation already. And so I saw her coming and I was like, oh, great. He's going to look. So see, I'm already prepping. So I'm changing and I'm bringing a different energy to the situation, which I'm aware of. So he looks and it triggers me. Okay. I kind of shut down in that moment. However, because he hadn't noticed at the time, I was able to go through the process in my head. So I'm thinking, okay, I was just triggered nobody has the right to change how you feel about yourself. So in that moment, I allowed my boyfriend's actions to change how I felt about myself. So when I was thinking about the, my reaction and my trigger, I'm looking at, okay, well, you know, he likes her or is she prettier than me? That whole comparison starts to happen. And then I start going, well, does he even like me? What's going on? You go down the rabbit hole, okay? You get the idea. So I went back to the room after and did a little meditation. And and again, in a trigger, I want you to ask yourself, what, what was I just triggered by? What was going through my head? What did I tell myself about myself? How did I allow this situation And this circumstance has changed how I feel about myself and how I feel. Nothing, no experience, no circumstance deserves to change how you feel about yourself. Because if I look at my highest self, she is confident and she doesn't care who walks by, Bernard can do whatever, okay? Because it doesn't matter. I know who I am. I know what we have. It's all good. A sexy guy walks by. I want to look too. (laughs) So here's where the tough conversation happens because most people, and this is exactly why I stopped talking about relationships to my friends until I could surround myself with people that had similar philosophies and growth mindset as me, because I wanted to work through my triggers. I didn't want people validating my insecurities and my fears because the normal conversation sounds a little something like this. Oh God what a man. I hate men. They're just such pigs. Of course he was going to look like they're, they run their, their life with their, with their heads down there. Okay. Not their heads up here. And I don't want to engage in that type of conversation. So I'm having these trainings and relationship day, which I'm so passionate about to change the conversation. The conversation is not about him. Because lots of people would say, girl, like, go find another guy who won't look at girls. Well, you know what? Find another guy. Something's going to be wrong with him, too. You follow you wherever you go. Nobody is perfect. So how do you show up as your confident self no matter what's happening? And the funny thing is, this is the kicker. The less I cared if he looked, the less he looked. The less I reacted in myself and the best, better I felt, the more confident I was, everything around me changed, right? But you, it has, it starts with you. 
it starts with you. So we have some, for myself, I didn't have anyone around me who was backing my relationship. I became full in doubt. Janine, tell me more about that. Who needs to back your relationship but you? And did you have a good relationship in your mind? Because here's the thing. When we always ask ourselves, like, do I need to leave this person? Is it right? Is this relationship right for us? Everything is brought to you for you. Everything is happening for you. Everything is helping you grow and become your best self. So use everything as a lesson. And every person that comes into your life, ask, how am I being triggered? What is this showing me about myself? How can I use this situation as a mirror? And as a mirror, my example is whatever you're looking for in the other person, look at how you can give it to yourself. And how can I strengthen and show up and not let my external environment affect me so that I'm still feeling good and feeling like my best and showing up as my best self every day? I felt my friends and family needed to support me and I realized it only needed my approval now. Yeah, 100%. And that's where the friends and family, it gets a little bit toxic sometimes because they're treating you how they know like it's even it's not about them they're projecting so i remember when i was still single and dating i had friends telling me like girl when are you going to start finding um suitable men and maybe i should be choosing your men for you because i'm married and you're not so clearly i'm better at this than you right at the time that was hurtful but that's all their stuff they're projecting on you that's all they know i grew up in a family and like generations of women wanting weak men that just did everything they wanted. And I grew up like, oh, your man should do this. Your man should do this. And you should do this. Like Italian heritage, like you should cook and you should do this. And all these shoulds, like this is what this person should do. This is who that person should do. But if we're just showing up as our best, and stepping into our highest self, it allows this person to step into their highest self. Like I've, and the relationship that you can have is so beautiful. Other people may not understand it, but let me tell you, I have the relationship that I've always wanted in a way that I never thought I would get because I was putting in the work and looking at the triggers and, and always using it as a lesson of how do I heal and how do I grow and how do I show up and how do I just love this person, not because they're being lovable, but because I am a lover. And in that growth, I was able to grow. My partner was able to grow. And it was just like this, it's this beautiful journey. But as I said last week, we choose each other every day. So in that journey, it's okay if he decides to go about another way as me, like we're allowed to do what we want. It's our lives. We're not like connected. We're just choosing to be on this journey together at this point in time. No expectation. And you can go back to our last training. People are, are firing up this chat board. Okay. So I didn't want people validating my insecurities and fears. Yeah. A hundred percent. Right. Because if you want to be different, this is Joanne. If you want to be different and you want to create, I didn't want to, when I looked around me, I didn't want the relationships my friends had. That was their, those were their relationships. And so often in relationships, it is my opinion that we choose partners that trigger us the least. Okay. My boyfriend, woo, ladies, he triggered every bit of me when we first started dating. Oh my goodness. It was work. It was work. And yeah, sometimes I wonder like, man, that would be a lot easier if I was just dating someone who didn't triggered me. But for me, I wanted someone I needed to step into my truest self. And I can honestly say for me, one of the qualities that I look for in my life and in my friends and my relationships is I want to always step up as my best self. I don't care if things trigger me because that's all me. So what, how can I use that to always step into my true potential and my highest self? Misery loves company. It sure does. And so also taking ownership of when you're projecting on others and catching yourself when you're projecting on others. So another example, and I see a couple um, other comments coming in, which I'm going to get to another example growing up is, you know, 
we've all been in those where people, you know, rel friendships and people break up with their partner. I had a friend who broke up with her partner. And in that, you know, I was just always this annoying kid being like, well, this is great. <laughs> you know, I know you might be hurt right now and I get it. You know, how can we look at your triggers and your fears and, and make sure that you don't bring that stuff into your next relationship. So your next relationship can be even better. And how can you learn and grow from this and really connect with yourself in this moment because you're that much closer to finding your man, right? And now, I mean, I, I understand why it can, would it upset some people. I get that. Like that might be super irritating to hear when you've broken up. She didn't talk to me for years because, and she told me later that at that time, she didn't feel like I was supporting her because right now in our relationships, especially with women, we like to complain. We like to, you know, put it on the man. Oh, he's such a, he's such a piece of shit <laughs> and it's all him. And that's awful. Like she wanted me to say, oh, don't worry, girl. He's an ass. I never liked him anyways, you know? you're better off now, you're gonna find someone so good, but then we waste the beautiful experience of growth, right? Like we waste it and then we just bring our shit into the next relationship. So how can you learn from all these experiences so that you can continue to grow? And I'm not saying stay with people that are treating you badly and stay around people who don't make you feel good but you make you feel good. And once you start to change that, that is the first step. And when you start to feel good and you feel in alignment, like I'm saying, it'll be either very clear that you need to leave and or everything around you will change. So make decisions out of clarity and when you feel good and out of alignment. Sometimes I understand that that isn't possible. So I've also been very open to the fact that when I was really working through a lot of my triggers, a lot of my triggers did also come from my family because from my past, because my mom had passed away and it created a lot of like tension in the family. And I couldn't see my family for a while. And I would choose work over family events, extended family. I was still luckily very close with my, uh, with my dad, my brother. And that's, I still love them. This is the clear part. I still love them. I was just loving them from afar because I needed to work on me and I needed to minimize those triggers so that I could build the strength and foundation to not be triggered anymore. And that's okay too. You know, like I know people who have been with partners and they're like, I can't find clarity when I'm with them. I can't, I can't do this. I can't find my truth. I can't feel good. If you need to step away, you need to step away. But the ideal, feel good find your feeling, learn, continue to grow, and then it'll be so obvious whether you need to leave or not, okay? I hope this is helping. I really love this conversation. So we have a couple comments coming back. So Paige says, I've tried uh, to back away and not allow the negativity from a family member affect me anymore, and it has been great, but now that family member is trying to come back into my life, um, they are great and supportive on the phone and through text, um, but there's so much tension and negativity when we are in person. It's hard to know how I feel about it. Yeah. Okay. So number one, don't try to analyze it and add, like, you don't have to figure out how you feel about it. You just have to know how to feel good. So what I would do is I'd give, so two exercises. Number one, if this relationship is really important to you, there's a little bit of work in the back end, how you feel and how you change the energy, how you feel is the most important. So I would write that personal love letter, never send it, but it's for you. And just send them love and write them a love letter and know like you're good. Like I know you're trying your best and see them as a human. Just send them love as a human. You ever wonder and think about how it's so much easier to love a stranger because we don't know anything about them than someone we know because we know all their crap, drop all that stuff. Just see if you can write them a love letter and change your energy and vibration. You have to feel good. And out of feeling good, um, this is specifically to Paige, but out of feeling good, then you might be able to speak your truth. Speaking your truth and feeling good and being in alignment does not mean you don't stand up for yourself. 
So it's very clear. You're standing up from for yourself from a different place. You're standing up for yourself out of love and clarity for you and the other person. So Paige, it might be effective to say, hey, you know, I'm not really feeling great in this dynamic anymore. Is, is how can I show up differently? And how can we show up differently to improve this relationship? You're still having very powerful conversations. It's all coming from a different place and you are feeling good and empowered. You look back to your highest self, ask yourself, how does your highest self show up in this situation from a place of love and acceptance, not ego. This is where, remember our training earlier this week, I was talking about, is your intuition actually your intuition? Because sometimes we come to a situation and we're like, this isn't serving me and I'm setting my boundaries <laughs> and, and it's all coming from ego, all coming from safety. It is completely different when it's coming from love and openness and acceptance. Hey, I love you, but this isn't working right now. I'm feeling a lot of tension. How do we show up differently? How do we be better together as one? Is that something you want? Asking questions to them. Is that what you want? I really, I'm feeling a little tension here. I'd really like to improve our relationship. How do you think we can do that? If this relationship is good and something you want to, if it's not, that's okay too, to, to create that space between you. I hope that helped Paige. Um, she commented again, I've told them that and I have tried to talk to them about it, but then they snap and say, I don't want to hear their this philosophical shit. This is good too. So number one, Always, uh, we always go back to us. How did we start that conversation? How did we show up? Were we completely clear and, um, and loving in the situation? If so, great, awesome. If not, maybe we can try the conversation again. So if we were, and if we don't wanna try the conversation again, be like, you know what, that's totally cool. I'm living me and I'm sending you love and light. I'm just gonna send you a little bit of love and light from afar. Maybe that's something that you wanna do I really, I never want to tell you what to do with your life. I need you, this is specifically to Paige, to sit there. I need you to visualize every day. I need you to visualize the life and the way you want to live and the way you want to feel every day. I want you to show up as her every day. And then I want you to ask, how do I send love and light to this person? And what's best in this situation for me and for them? And if you've had this conversation and even in the conversation, when they told you that they didn't want this philosophical shit, how'd you react? And if they said, I don't want this philosophical shit, you're like, that's okay. You let me know. You come back to me when you want to improve this relationship. I love you. And see when they come back, leave it on them. Right? Does that make sense? I'm not sure how you reacted when they told you that. It's easy when someone gives you that to like shut down and, and abandon your highest self, but your highest self would be like, okay, that's cool. I don't really think it's philosophical shit because I feel real good, but my priority is me feeling good. So I'd love to improve this relationship. You let me know how you think we can do that. And you come back to me when you have some solutions, okay? Love you. Do you see how my energy in that conversation it's almost annoyingly loving. The other person's gonna be like, shit, why am I not getting to that person? Fear against fear, right? We don't wanna be the fear. Drop the fear, fear against love, and they're only fighting against himself, okay? That makes sense. I was super calm and was like, okay, that's fine. Awesome, Paige, that's great. And then leave it on them, be like, you know, let me know when you have some ideas because I really wanna improve this. And then don't let it drop. Like the next time they call, be like, hey, I'm so happy to hear from you. Have you thought a little bit more about how we could improve our relationship? I'm really excited to have that chat, right? So always bring your highest self and always be like, love. You're still approaching the experience and the situation, but you're just approaching it from a different place. You don't have to be ignorant. You don't have to um, you know, let people walk all over you. That's not what we're saying here. You're just having the conversation. <coughs> See, you're just having the conversation from a very different place. I hope that helps, Paige. Let me know what you took away from that and if any of what I said resonated with you and will help you improve that relationship. Could we have some other comments here? Uh, Mia says, I always had higher expectations. The guy who I am going to date needs to be adventurous, humorous, chilled, relaxed, who loves to go for car rides outside the city. This sounds fun. Okay, so something to add to that, Mia? 
quickly before I read the rest of your message, how does that make you feel? How does being with someone, so if we're looking into like manifestation and you connecting and actually raising your vibration, how does being with someone adventurous and humorous and chill and like love going on car rides out of the city, how does that make you feel? Connect to the feeling, not the actual um, thing, because then we get really attached to the thing and realize that, hey, you can maybe get that feeling through other things that you may not know. What we know, we know because of our experiences, right? The feeling is so much more valuable. So stick to the feeling of how all that goodness makes you feel. And then you raise your vibration and anyone who will make you feel that way will come. Does that make sense? Okay. Then we go like to find an amazing, interesting things to do outside the city. And every time when a guy comes, I tied, I tried to put into the guy, my above expectation. Yeah. So I totally get the expectations. That's why resonating with the feeling may be way more helpful. How do I want to feel with this man? And every time you go out on a date and every morning, if it's important, like relationships were really important to me, I wanted to, I wanted to fall in love. And so number one, connect to that feeling of how you want to feel in a relationship. Number two, all of those things, adventurous, humorous, chill, you know, going for car rides outside the city. Mia, do you do that already? Are you looking for a man to bring adventure, humor, chill, and, you know, fun little excursions because you don't do them? I want you to write a list of all the things you expect from a man. And every day I want you to say, how can I give this to myself? Looking at how can you be complete and full and attract who you are? You attract who you are. So if you're not giving those things to yourself, maybe you're upset because you're not getting them and you're not feeling fulfilled because there's this part of you that needs to be ignited and you can ignite her. You have the power. And then you find, you you match, right? It's all this like match. I come back to this attraction, not to be super hokey and like law of attraction stuff, but vibration and give it to you first and then everything will come. Let me know if that helps Mia and if you resonate with that at all. She also said, I also had an issue with my triggers where I always run away from it, yeah, or break up, yeah. So have a conversation to with them and say, you know, I want to talk about my triggers. I want to be better. I want to show up. I still do that with my partner. We both do that. Sometimes I find I get this little like anger in me when I get upset and it's an issue for me and I want to move through it. And so I say like, I want to address that anger. I want to know where it's coming from and I want to move through it so that we can change the pathway. Your reactions and how you're showing up is just a conditioning and just a pathway that you've got had going for a long time. We just need to rewire and change it. So the visual I like to give my clients, and maybe this will resonate with you, is if you're going down a ski slope, okay, and you go down the path that everyone's been taking, that's easy. That's the path that you've been creating for years. Once you start a new path after a fresh snowfall, it's a little bit tough to start the new path, right? Every step may be a little bit tedious and have need a little bit more energy, but your commitment to start that new pathway will continue to get the new pathway easier and easier every time you take it. And then as it snows, the other one starts to fill. So you're just reconditioning and changing. I hope that's helping. Um, I hope that helps Mia. Yeah, so having the awareness is really key of your triggers and knowing. So Diana says, um, relationships come and go, but the relationship with yourself always lasts. Yep, you got to do the work. You bring yourself to the next relationship. And I, it's just, it's a different philosophy, right? I don't, I want someone who kind of triggers me, not for the trigger, but for me, I know I have more. I know I don't want to get caught in my old patterns. I don't want someone who just meets my old patterns. I want my best. I have so much more to do. I have so many more ways to show up in this world, and I know you do too. And so if we're conditioning and 
and creating this safe environment around us of something that doesn't trigger us, then when something, everything's always good, there's always gonna be triggers, but then we're gonna try to control our family, our friends, our children to act in a certain way so that we are not triggered. Let's change that conversation, ladies. Let's say, trigger me, do it so that I can be better, so that I can show up and so that I can change because I have so much more in me and I don't wanna live to my past experiences. I don't wanna live to my conditions and how I was told to be. So always be asking yourself like, why do I feel this way? Where did I learn this? What am I telling myself about myself? Am I being, and here's the really powerful part that we've talked about before, am I being my pain body right now? Am I being my fears? Am I being my insecurities? Or am I watching them and observing them? Your fears and insecurities, they're always gonna be there, but our relationship with them changes. We start to become friends with them and we start to observe them as our roommate and not as who we are. Your emotions and your triggers are not who you are. It is just an emotion and a pattern that you have lived in for so long. And you aren't that. So once you start to be aware of your trigger, now it's really funny. Instead of thinking, oh, I'm being triggered, I'm feeling this, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I'm being triggered right now. Look at that pathway, look at that emotion, look at that anxiety coming in. I do not have to be absorbed by the emotion. I observe the emotion. I don't have to become it. And sometimes I still do become it, let's be real, right? I'm like so in the feeling, I can't separate from it. And in that moment, I just try to do something different so that I can separate from the emotion so that I can get my level head back and get my highest self back. And we can continue talking about this, you know, reprogramming and working with our triggers and our pathways. It is an ongoing journey and commitment to change and to evolution. It's not just something it's like working out, right? We can't just work out once and be like, I got that. I read this one self help book. I got it. No, (laughs) you have to apply it. I literally read every self-help book and thought I knew it all. And, And then I started getting coaches and realizing, shit, I know nothing. And I totally am living in patterns and I have so many blind spots that I had no idea. So whether it be your romantic relationships, your friendship, your coaches, you gotta surround yourself with people who are gonna have these real conversations with you. Pull, call you out on your shit, take you out of your patterns and your conditioning and help you step into your truest self. But you have to commit to you too. We have a couple more uh, comments coming in. Um, okay, so Paige says, yes, that's super helpful. Um, I was super calm, awesome. Okay, thanks for the suggestion. We'll give it a shot from Mia. So yeah, visualize and see how you can give it to you. Honestly, it start, I get it. Like when I was single, I, and even I still do it now, the best thing is though this work and like take, I, I love taking myself out on dates, okay? It's my favorite thing in the world. I still take myself out on dates even though I have a boyfriend. This work that you're doing now is the foundation. It is the pathway. It does not stop, (laughs) right? If I were to just like feel fulfilled and be looking at, I'd look at, okay, these are all the things I wanna do with a guy. Well, I'm gonna do them. Why can't I do them by myself? Or right, by myself is the most powerful. But so many people stop that work when they think they have everything. They don't realize, well, you got it all because you were doing the work, it doesn't stop. So I recognize even when I haven't taken myself out on a date and I haven't given my me time, I notice a difference. There's actually more tension and friction in my relationship because I'm expecting more from him and I'm expecting him to bring more because I'm not bringing me. I'm looking for him to fill things that I need instead of giving me what I need. See how it always starts with self? So, I mean, I've been talking a lot today. You ladies have had lots of questions. This is fun. We could talk. I know this relationships thing. You like it. Yeah, it's good. Any other questions before we sign out today? And I'm super pumped to come back on next Thursday when we talk about relationships again. If we need an extra relationship day, you let me know. 
let me know if you have what you're going to take away from today, what really resonated with you, and or if you have any other questions. It's really helpful for me to know what tips and techniques are most helpful for you. I love having these conversations. Thank you for being here and for being open to seeing a different way and for being so growth minded and and just being exploratory as to something different. Because I know this; these are not normal conversations. So I appreciate you being so open and so op so yeah, so open and know what you do. Whatever is right for you. These are only tips and suggestions of what I've learned and what's worked for me. But I recognize everyone is different, and you got to do you. You have to choose what's right for you and how you show up. It's all good. Like totally no judgment. You do whatever is right for you. I love you ladies so much. You're welcome, Joanne. Thank you ladies for being here and for showing up. Tomorrow is Friday and we're doing networking. So we're going to chat about how to network while on quarantine and or this is useful when working from home. Like how do you continue to network and, and find the right friends and relationships and, and build those relationships while you're in quarantine, right? How do we expand our social circle? Um, thanks so much, Mia. I really appreciate you being here. And yeah, keep please keep me up to date. Honestly, I'm very genuine when I say update me on this and let me know what's helping you. Let me know what resonates with you. Send me a DM um, and let me know if there's anything else I can do to help you. Sending you ladies so much love on this beautiful relationship day. Get so aligned with how you want to feel in a relationship and just honestly, like love. I'm just sending you so much love. Okay. I love you. Thank you for being here. I'll see you later. Thanks, Janine, Mia, Joanne, Paige. Uh, let's keep going. Diana, thank you ladies for engaging with me this morning and for all of you who have been watching. Love you so much. Bye for now.